Hey you guys, this is Omni, and I wanted to give you guys a quick little look at how I put together the character menu containing Rayman as fake DLC. If you haven't seen the video, this is what it looks like. Uh, basically what it is is just off-screen footage of the menu with both Rayman and Mewtwo, and the cursor moving to select Rayman, basically. At first I thought I would recreate the entire menu from scratch, just because that would give me more flexibility with animations and things like that, but that ended up being a really bad idea because the menu is way too complex, so I ended up capturing some footage of the menu using my Game Capture HD, and what I needed to get was a few things. First I needed to get some footage of the entire menu without anything happening, uh, that way I would be able to overlay things on top and modify it as I would need to. I also needed to get the cursor moving from the start position, and then traveling to where Rayman would eventually be. And then the last thing I needed to get was the animations of the characters on the fourth row there, populating the player one character slot as you pass over them. Uh, and you can see here it kind of has like a little whoosh speed line animation. So once I had all those parts, I brought them into After Effects to composite them. So first what I did is mask out the cursor so that I could overlay that on top of the idle character menu footage. So as you can see here, I've got just the isolated cursor, and once I take that and overlay that on top of the character menu, this is what it looks like. Now as you can see here, it looks pretty fake because the idle character menu is not responding to the cursor as it passes over the characters. So the next step would be to modify that footage so that it reacts to the cursor. So what I did is I opened the footage in Photoshop and first I modified the placement of some of the characters so that there was room for both Mewtwo and Rayman. Now it was important that I put Mewtwo in the character select screen as well because he's confirmed DLC already and if he's not in the menu then no one's gonna believe any of this. So. The other thing is that Mewtwo needs to be original art, because if I use existing art, people are going to notice and say, hey, that, that art comes from Pokemon whatever, so what I did is I modified a screenshot of the trophy of Mewtwo from, from the game, and colorized it a bit, and modified the hand position. I also changed the way it was shaded, and I changed the shape of his head a little bit to better match the art that they showed us during the Nintendo Direct. Now once I had that, I put him between Greninja and Rob, but I needed to move Captain Falcon out of that row because there wasn't enough room otherwise. So I put Captain Falcon next to Little Mac, and then I made a space between Sonic and the Mii Fighters because I thought Rayman being a third party character made more sense for him to be in the bottom row. So once I've done all that, I also needed to replicate the flames in the background, and this was a difficult process because uh, I didn't have any sort of source image on which to base it, so I had to patch together bits and pieces of the flame pattern. Uh, and really, the flame pattern is just uh, expanding from the center over and over again, and it repeats pretty quickly, so I was able to patch together that pattern and then use a smart object to put that underneath the art of both Mewtwo and Rayman. Now it doesn't match perfectly with the adjacent character slots, as you can see here. Uh, as the flames move out of Greninja's slot and into Mewtwo's, it doesn't quite line up, but I wanted to make sure they look at least pretty convincing going from Mewtwo's to Rob's. The next thing I needed to do was create the portrait for Rayman that would populate the player slot. Uh, and that involves creating the text art for Rayman's name. It also involved making a symbol that would associate with uh, the Rayman franchise, essentially. The symbol that I used for Rayman is the Lum, which is a commonly recurring element in the Rayman franchise. Uh, I believe it's been in every game. At least all of the games I've ever played had the Lum in it, so I figured, you know, it's a common enough symbol I considered using just the ring that shows up on his shirt, but I didn't think that was iconic enough. So given Rayman's recent stylistic 
reimagining, I thought it would be appropriate to use the new Lum design that they introduced in Rayman Origins. The other big part of the player slot is the animation that plays whenever you hover over one of the characters. Basically, the character kind of rushes in from the right side of the slot, so I needed to recreate that for Rayman. Uh, if I had a PNG of the speed lines here, I would have been able to do that more easily, but instead I had to recreate it from scratch. So it's not a perfect match, but I got it as close as I could. Once I have all of these pieces in place, I could bring that into the After Effects file, and then move things around, change the timing so that everything lined up. Now since I have footage of the characters populating that player slot, I could just overlay that on top of the existing idle menu footage. But the characters do not move in sync with the cursor anymore because the characters have shifted slightly to the left, so the cursor would theoretically hover on top of them a little bit sooner than before, so I had to change the timing to account for that. Uh, but, as you can see here, it's getting pretty close. The last thing I needed to do was make the character portraits on the grid react to the cursor as it passed over them. So. Basically all it does is the character portrait expands a little bit and there's a red outline wherever the cursor is. So I recreated that and then I individually put those slots back into the footage. And this is what that looks like. There's a lot of little details that you have to make sure you capture, such as the uh, pulsating of the red outline as it rests on one of the characters, the aliasing on the letters for the characters' names, Obviously, with a leak, people are going to scrutinize the image, make sure everything lines up and is consistent with the way it actually appears in the game. So, a lot of things I need to account for. But, with all of that put together, this is what it looks like. And there you have it. If you haven't watched the time-lapse uh, painting of Rayman, then you can find that here. And yeah, I don't have any plans to make any more big uh, fake leaks or anything like that, but I am doing Smashified, which is where I draw characters in the style of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. So if you want to see one of your favorite characters that didn't get into the game, then post your suggestion in the comments. Or if you prefer, you can tweet your suggestion using the hashtag Smashified. And I will look at as many of those as I can. And if your suggestion is popular enough, then who knows, maybe I will paint it. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. So go do those things. Uh, or, or if you know you don't want to do those things, then don't. I can't, I can't make you do anything. So thanks for watching the video. And I will see you guys next time.